So a lot of people struggle with data stores in Roblox Studio, but they are actually pretty simple. So I will just explain them so you don't have to read through the documentation, but as usual leave a like and subscribe to support the channel, and let's get into the video. So first to actually use data stores, you need to enable studio access to API services, which you do by going into the game settings from the home tab, then under the security, check this option to enable studio access to API services. Then after you enable it, you need to press on save and then you will be able to use data stores. So I'm just going to add a server script inside of the server script service because there is few things that I need to mention first about the data stores. So one of the things is that you can only access them from server scripts or from modules that these server scripts require. If I try to access a data store from a local script, inside of let's say starter player scripts, it would just throw an error. And another thing is that data stores, they save between places in an experience. So let's just say you had another place in the places folder right here. Right now I only have the main one, but if I were to add a new place, the data stores, they would just save between them. And then there are also three types of data stores. There is the normal data store, the global data store and the ordered data store. And you get all of them from the data store service. So I'm just going to make a local variable to get the data store service, like this. And how do you create the data store itself? It's just as simple as writing another variable. I'm just going to name this one my data store is equal to and then data store service. And then we need to use a method. And this method is called get data store. And then we need to pass it a name and an optional scope and also the options. So the name is required, but the scope and the options are optional. So we need to name our data store. And I will just name this basic data store. And getting the different data stores, like the global one and the ordered one, is basically the same, except they use different methods. So for the global, it's going to be the get global data store. And then for the ordered, it's just going to be the get ordered data store. And what's the difference between all of these data stores? So the default data store is basically just like a database that the Roblox server can access. And the data stores, they basically look like dictionaries. So you can have something like, for example, this. And this is essentially how the data store is basically going to look like. And this key could be, for example, something like the player.userid. And also for the normal data stores, this value could be something like a table which then will have different keys like money, wins, coins, and so on. So just think of this data store as if you, for example, had players in a game, you will just get data from all of these players in a game and save it somewhere in like maybe session data. And then you would only change these values for these players. Now a global data store is basically the same, except its values could be accessed globally between the servers. And an order data store is basically the same as a global data store, except it can only hold numbers. So if you had the previous dictionary, it would be equal to player.userid and then a number. And now this number, it needs to be a positive integer. So it can be something like minus 10 or 0 because the order data store only allows positive numbers. So that's the difference between the data stores. And now for operations like saving data, removing data, and so on, there is different methods. There is the set async, get async, then increment async, and then update async, and lastly remove async. These are the methods that are used by all of these data stores, but the order data store also has its own method called get sorted async. And as you probably get the set async is used for setting the data, then this is for getting the data and increment async basically just works as if you had a value, let's say the player had 10 coins, you could use increment async on this key to increase the coin amount by one. Then the update async, it works similar to the set async, where the set async is basically the best for quickly updating a specified key, but this could interfere if you, for example, try to save the same key from two different servers. In that case, the update async would be better. So if you for example had a normal data store that would only get keys from players that are in a certain server, then you could use set async to update the data. 
but for something like a global data store or order data store, it would be better to use the update async. And this doesn't apply to only player data, you could also just have a, let's say, round system that would count how many rounds have been played overall in the game. If you wanted to have a ordered data store for that, it would also be better to use the update async, because that would be a value that multiple servers are trying to update. But moving on, the remove async is just used to remove data. And now the get stored async for the order data store, now this method can return something called data store pages. And what the data store pages basically are, they are also a table. And in this table you could specify if the values are ascending or descending, which means going up or down, then a page size that could be from like 0 to 800, then a minimal value, which could be, for example, if it was a global score, you would take in account only scores that are more than 50, let's say. And also a max value, which would be to like, let's say, 100. But now let's actually try putting these methods into use. And let's just get the player service and also make a session data variable. Because there is a lot of ways of actually storing the data for the player. And how I'm going to do this one is that whenever the player joins, they're going to have the session data. Then their data is going to be loaded into that session. And after they leave, the session data data is going to be loaded back into the data store. So let's get the player service that player added event and connect a function to it. And also do the same for player removing, because we want to save the data whenever the player leaves. So first you need to have some kind of an example data, which is going to be a table that's going to hold some values. It's going to be coins and wins, and now we're going to use one of the methods to check if the player actually has some kind of a data now. So you can do local success, then data is equal to, and now all of these methods is the best if you use them in a protected call. And that's because of these operations being done through network. So use a protected call, just so if anything goes wrong, it's not going to error and just stop the code from running. So you need to use pcall and then function. And now I made this second variable data, and that's because I want to use a return inside of this function. Now if I didn't use the return, this data would probably just be an error message. If you for example had a local variable, that would be right here, you could just leave it as this, but I'm just going to keep it as data. So now we need to access the data store and then use the get async method. And now the specified key is the best if you leave it as some kind of a unique user ID, which is just going to be the player right here, that user ID. What this is going to do is going to look if this data store has a value of player that user ID. Right now it's not going to have it, because this is going to be the first time the player joins the game. And what I need to do right now is use the example data as a default data preset that's going to be stored in the my data store. Oh, and I just realized there shouldn't be a global data store, there should be an ordered data store. And now I need to do some kind of a logic to put the data from this data store into a session, or alternatively, put the example data into the session instead. So I'm just going to do session data from player that user ID is equal to, and here I'm going to do a ternary operator. Where first I'm going to check the type of data from this variable right here is going to be a table. That's because the default preset is a table. Then I have to set the session data to be the data, or alternatively, it's going to be the example data. So how this line of code basically works, if the data is going to be a table, which means that if there is going to be a key of the player user ID in the data store, it's going to return data, and if it doesn't, it's just going to set the example data. And I'm checking if this is a table, and that's because this data could also be an error message, or just be nil. Then I just want to print out the session data. And I'm going to do a playtest. And here you can see that the session data is going to have my user ID and also these wins and coins. So now let's actually just save the data for the player whenever they leave. And this time, instead of using the get async, you want to use the set async method. And also the session data from player that user ID. Let's also print out the success and the data. So this is going to be the new data that's going to appear after I leave, except it returns that instance instead of the table. But let's actually try to join again and see if anything has changed. So right now the player is going to have zero coins and five wins. So now with this logic, we could add value to the session data instead of using the, for example, increment async to add, let's say, one coin to the player. 
So I'm just going to try to add 5 coins to the player user ID session data, then press on play, then leave so it saves, and then print out the session data again. So now the player should have 5 coins instead of 0, or actually 10 because I'm adding the coins again, but you can basically see that the data is saving. And of course the session data is just an example, if you only want to have the data in the data store, a different logic that you could implement is for example to check if the player doesn't have data right here, so you could do if not data, and the type of data is different than a string, then here you just want to copy this line, place it in here, and instead of the session data from player ID, you just want to save the example data. Now I'm just going to name my data store to basic data store 2, so it's going to be the different data than previously just to show this another example. So at the end I'm just going to print out the data, and this is going to be success 2 and data 2, which I'm also going to print out right here. So at first it should print out this, then again after I join it should print out the normal data, and also I'm going to just comment this line so it doesn't interfere, and just do a playtest. So right now it printed out true, meaning that this operation was a success, and then it printed out this instance, which is just this data that was saved. In reality it is just the example data. So now if I stop the playtest and do another one, it should print out this data right here. It's saying that I have coins and wins. So you don't necessarily need to put the data instead of the session data. But now while having this data, I could for example make a part. And for this part I'm just going to make a reference and then add a torched event, where I want to use another method, which is going to be the increment async, to actually add, let's say, more coins whenever the player touches the part. So I can copy this line, and then use the increment async method. We also need to get the player, and then the player is equal to the player service, get player from character, and just the other part that parent. Then we can do if not player then return end. And again, I'm just going to print out the success and data. So I kind of realized that I did a mistake with this one. Increment async shouldn't really be used in this way, since this data is a table and it should mostly be used in the order data store which holds numeric values. So what I did here was actually a mistake, because I used it on a wrong data store. And for this method, what we need to do is change the key, where this is not going to be the player user ID, this one is going to be the coins. And this one needs to be a string, as you can see right here. Then there is the delta, which is the value that you want to increment by. So you can give it like 1. And then a user's ID table, because you can increment this data for more than just one user in the data store. So you just do player.userID. And I'm just going to do a playtest and just step on this part. And you can see that data store request was added to the queue, because it's incrementing my coins, but it's just doing it slowly. So this isn't really the proper way of doing the incrementation, because as you can see it just can get clogged up with this. It would be just better to set the data the same as from this function, with either the set async or update async method. And sadly I don't have enough time to cover the get stored async and the update async, but lastly I'm just going to show how to use the remove async. So let's just say I wanted to remove the data after the player left, I will just use the remove async from the data store on the player.userid and I'm going to print out the success and the data where in this case, if I just leave right now, this value is going to be true and this is the data that was just removed. So I had no coins and 5 wins from this print right here and then the same data was removed from this remove async method. But yeah, that is basically going to be everything for today. I also want to cover profile services soon, so be on a lookout for that. But like I previously mentioned, if you like and subscribe to support the channel, also go check out my UGC items. And yeah, hope everyone had a nice day and see you guys.